Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where as requested in this video I'm going to talk about the latest paper in vivo base editing rescues Hutchinson Guilford progeria syndrome in mice where as you can see they were able to extend the median lifespan of the mice from 215 days to 510 days more than doubling their median lifespan. And so in this video firstly I'll talk about what is Hutchinson Guilford progeria syndrome and how was it caused and how base editing can be employed to treat this condition, also going into detail about what actually is base editing. And then we'll take a look at the data in this paper and then leave with some further questions and thoughts. So firstly then, what is hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome, which I'll refer to as progeria from now on? Well, it's a very rare genetic disease that's characterised by accelerated ageing. People with this condition look healthy at birth, but from around the age of one, symptoms begin to emerge, beginning with growth failure, skin abnormalities and hearing loss, but progressing rapidly into joint stiffness, loss of fat under the skin, musculoskeletal abnormalities and wrinkles. And sadly, for these reasons, patients with progeria typically die aged around 14 or 15 due to atherosclerosis, severe cardiovascular complications or stroke. Now, the majority of patients with progeria have genetic mutations in the gene lamin A. Well, the majority seem to have the same one mutation in lamin A, which is a mutation of a cytosine residue to a thymine residue. And so the gene lamin A encodes the protein lamin A, and lamins are a set of proteins that can be found in the nucleus, and they can mainly be found interacting with the inner nuclear membrane. They play a really important role in maintaining the integrity of the nucleus. But lamins are not just required for structural integrity due to their mechanosensitive properties. It's also now thought that lamins play a key role in the regulation of gene expression. So what happens to lamin A in progeria patients? Well, progeria patients have that single mutation as I mentioned, and that mutation is in exon 11. So it's in a coding region of lamin A, as in a region of the gene that will actually end up coding for the protein. So in terms of how the codon is affected, the change goes from GGC to GGT, so both of them still code for glycine. So you might be thinking, well that doesn't affect the protein, it's a synonymous mutation. However, something very interesting happens with this mutation. The change from cytosine to thymine introduces a splice site. And so it's actually referred to as a cryptic splice site. And so what happens is the cell reads it as a splice site and cuts off part of exon 11 so it doesn't end up in the final mRNA product. And so part of the coding sequence is missing and within that sequence is a cleavage site. And so what happens is the processing of lamin A becomes perturbed and so instead of forming lamin A, you start from pre-lamin and you end up with this alternative protein product that is referred to as progerin. Now, that felt like a bit of a long-winded explanation, so here is a nicer diagram than my sketches from the Nature News and Refuse article that might make a bit more sense. But the bottom line is that the presence of progerin is bad because it hampers the activity of the normal laminae, and so it perturbs the nuclear shape, rigidity and function, and this is deleterious for a cell. And cells that are particularly vulnerable are cells found in the skin and the cardiovascular system because they're more exposed to mechanical stress, which without the functional laminae cannot cope with. And it's interesting to note that the presence of progerin has also been shown to be a biomarker of cellular ageing in human skin. And so understanding this disease itself and how it manif manifests is one area that's really interesting. But obviously the important question is what kind of therapeutics are available to be able to deal with this? Well, a variety of attempts have been made. There was some interest in using metformin and other more advanced drugs include those that inhibit an enzyme known as vinosyl transferase that modifies progerin and aids in its accumulation. And one of these, ionophanib, was approved by the FDA just last year. However, one of the more obvious suggestions to be able to treat this disease is to be able to target the genetic mutation itself. But whilst it may be obvious, it is not trivial. However, a series of studies came out in 2019 that used CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing to repair the lamin A mutation. Both of these studies were effective in terms of alleviating the decline in health in mouse models of progeria. However, translating this directly to human patients isn't so easy due to the concerns with using CRISPR-Cas9. You see, CRISPR-Cas9 uses the enzyme Cas9 
that is a nuclease that induces a double-stranded break into DNA. So this is effectively a form of DNA damage. Firstly, due to the nature of the way CRISPR-Cas9 works by using a guide RNA to target the complex to different regions of DNA, it can result in the complex being recruited to so-called off-target sites, and there it could also be inducing double-stranded breaks. And so this could be deleterious for the cell and make it prone for tumorigenesis. Now, don't get me wrong, CRISPR-Cas9 is a really useful technique and was well worthy of the Nobel Prize this year. But what's more interesting is that the Cas9 protein itself can get mutated so that it only cuts one strand or none of the strands. And so this reduces the chance of there being double-stranded breaks. And so it's thought that these approaches that have mutated Nikkei's or dead Cas9 versions are much safer in terms of using it for treating different human diseases. However, the thing is, the efficiency of editing massively decreases without a double-stranded break, because in the traditional CRISPR-Cas9 model, you need that double-stranded break to open up the genomic region, which enables a repair template to come in and access the region and enable precise genome editing. This is much more challenging with a single cut or no cuts at all. And so this is where base editing comes in. So base editing doesn't need a repair template, nor does it need a double-stranded break. And so as given by the name, base editing edits bases. And so to be, to be a bit more specific, base editing can edit the different nucleobases. And so this is simply the four different nucleobases, which you likely have heard of, A, T, C, and G, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And so far, there are two main base editors. There are adenine-based editors and cytosine-based editors. Adenine-based editors convert adenine through an intermediate called inosine to guanine. So you go from an A to a G. Cytosine-based editors, on the other hand, convert the cytosine through an intermediate known as uracil to thymine. So you go from C to T. And so in progeria patients, the ideal goal would be able to change this thymine residue back to cytosine. Now, there's no such thing yet as a reverse cytosine-based editor, so the alternative approach is to use an adenine-based editor because thymine pairs with adenine in the DNA. And so if you think about it in terms of the DNA structure, you can edit that thymine residue back to cytosine if you edit the adenine residue to guanine because guanine then pairs with cytosine. And so adenine-based editors then are a fusion of the Cas9 protein with a deoxyadenosine deaminase that can convert the adenine into inosine, which is effectively read as guanine within a cell. And then after DNA replication, you get the changing from an original A to T base pair to a G to C base pair. So therefore, it has the potential to fix the mutation seen in progeria patients. So this nicely brings us on to this recent Nature publication where they actually used quite a fancy adenine base editor that's been modified to improve its efficiency in terms of the deaminase activity, but also possess a variant that enables it to target a special PAM site, a protospacer adjacent motif that enables the base editor to get close to the target sites on the lamin A gene. So firstly, they tested their system on fibroblast cells that were derived from patients with progeria, and they delivered the system by lentiviral infection. So it results in stable expression of the adenine base editor, along with the guide RNA to target it to the lamin A site. And impressively, they observed very high efficiency of editing, up to 91% by 20 days in one of the cell lines. And the remarkable thing about the editing is that it's also evident in the nuclear morphology, so as I said before, the lamin A is really important for maintaining nuclear structure. And so in progeria patients, it's common to see a kind of wrinkled nucleus, which basically shows that the nucleus has been deformed and isn't as it should be. However, as you can see in this figure here, with the addition of the adenine base editor, the morphology is restored along with a reduction in progerian expression and a nice circular pattern of expression for lamin A. And the other good news is that any off-target editing was very low, less than 0.1% in these cell lines, supporting the potential safety of using this adenine base editor for editing the lamin gene. So the next step was to test this approach in vivo by delivering the adenine base editor to a mouse model of progeria, 
whereby they actually have the human progeria mutated gene being expressed. So to deliver the genes that express the adenine base editor and the guide RNA into the mice, they use the FDA-approved delivery system of the adeno-associated virus. The thing with these viruses is that you can't really pack too much into them and Cas9 is quite a big protein. So they actually did something very clever here, which is to split it up and to have two separate AAVs, adeno-associated viruses, where they actually split up the adenine base editor complex and used intines that then, in vivo, bring the complex back together. Very awesome biochemistry. Um, a bit TMI for this video, but alas, I mentioned that anyway, now it's too late. Anyway, the main aim of using this delivery system is to try and get the adenine base editor to as many cells as possible of particular importance, cells in the heart and muscle that, as I mentioned earlier, are particularly relevant for progeria patients since they're the ones that receive a lot of mechanical stress. And so that is another reason why they chose the adeno-associated virus, in particular the AAV9 virus, because it has quite a broad tropism, so it targets lots of different tissues. And the actual mechanism of delivery that showed the most promise in these results was via retroorbital injection. And this was done when the mice were either three days old or two weeks old. And as you can see here, in both cases, different tissues were targeted by the virus, resulting in expression of the adenine base editor and correct editing of the, the lamin A gene. In particular, you can see quite high editing in their liver, but notably in the two-week injection, you get a higher editing efficiency of the aorta and bone tissue. So the base editor was working in FIVO, but did this have any impact on the phenotype of progeria in the mice? Now, if you do remember what I said at the beginning, a common cause of death of progeria patients is atherosclerosis, and that's due to the hardening of the blood vessels. And so if you can see in these figures here, you can see that by six months of age, progeria mice that were given the adenine base editor have a much reduced diameter of this fibrous staining that you can see around these vessels here. And along with this improvement in aorta pathology was also the remarkable extension of median lifespan that I spoke about at the start of the video, which I think you'll agree is very striking and impressive. As the median survival increased from 215 days up to 510 days, and 510 days actually corresponds roughly to the beginning of old age in this type of mice. But as you can also notice, some of the mice did die, and it's important to understand what was the cause of their death. Was it due to progeria or due to the treatment? And out of the nine that died, five of them had liver tumours. And so they looked to see if there was any AAV integration into the liver. And they found that in the AAV injected mice, but not from the control mice, there was evidence of rare AAV integration into genomic regions where integration has previously been associated with liver tumours in mice. And so obviously that's a cause of concern for translating this therapy to humans. However, so far there hasn't ever been reported liver tumours from humans treated with therapeutic AAV factors. And so one potential way of reducing the risk of this happening, at least in the mice, is to use lower doses of AAV. And one way that they could use lower doses is if they have a more efficient adenine-based editor. And so since this work was actually done, there has been adenine-based editor variants that have even higher editing efficiencies than the one that they used in the study. And so potentially by using these more efficient editing adenine-based editors, they might be able to reduce the required dosage and may also therefore be able to prevent or reduce the risk greatly of liver tumours from forming. But besides the dosage, the other important consideration is the timing of the injection. It's kind of remarkable here that they just had a single injection and they saw this phenotype of the lifespan extension. It'll be important to work out what is the most effective time to give it to progeria patients, given also the fact that there's a bit of a delay in terms of actually diagnosing the disease in the first place. And so safety is paramount but this work is definitely a step forward in the therapeutic treatment of progeria. So with that, I just have one final thing to say, which is I think I have finally launched the Patreon page. Absolutely no pressure, I don't really expect anything. Just there if you want to. And I'll also be uploading, at least from now, the maps for each of my videos. So with that, I hope you've learned something, and as always, thanks for listening.